You gots to have. I gots to have. We gots to have that RGB. You gots to have. I gots to have. We gots to have that RGB. You gots to have. I gots to have. We gots to have that RGB. You gots to have. I gots to have. We gots to have that RGB. Welcome back. Today we are gonna cover RGB MUX modding the JBC AV36850. But before that, where the hell have I been? I've been working a lot. Work sucks. But I just want to thank you for being here. And we are almost at a thousand subscribers, which I never figured this little cringy channel would uh, turn into. So I want to thank you for that. And if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to. Now on to the content. So I've had my eye out for years for a JBC D series, but never was lucky enough to find one. But I got lucky enough to get an AV36850, which was a precursor to the D series, but should contain the same tube. No component video, but I'm crazy enough to RGB mod it. So I dig some systems out to test AV and S video, and it leaves some to be desired so let's just rip this thing apart clean it recap it mux mod it and see what we end up with i score a stand that should suffice about 30 minutes away i get everything crammed in my retro corner that the old lady likes to call junk and this is a good warning beware of the invasion of crts Another quick testing to make sure it survived the trip upstairs. A remote from eBay. We are ready to see what treasures Big Bertha holds inside. What we find is the Thompson RCA Dusty A90 AEJ 15X01 tube. A dusty but nifty mainboard tray that slides out and locks in nicely. And we also get some more dust. Here we have a nice little look-see inside and a once and twice over of all the internal components for your viewing pleasure. Ah, this is just so I remembered how shit hooked back up. Thompson RCA began manufacturing this tube in 96 and it was used all the way to 2001. It was a very popular CRT tube used in a lot of arcade cabinets and in a lot of the later JBC D series sets, like this one that Steve from Retro Tech used to own. Now, I've seen a lot of comments online that these JBCs have 800 TV line tubes, and there's not a lot of information to find about it. But according to Killer Dolphin 72, the only JBC with an M class Pro monitor was the 32D305/Y. I can't verify this. I can't find any other information. But uh, this Dolphin 72 seems to know his shit, so why not believe it? But even those M-Class Pro monitors were more along the lines of 600 TV lines from what I've read. So if you know different, drop a comment. Damn it. But in 2004, Thompson RCA shut the doors on both its plants after sustaining fire damage and with the end of the CRT era looming. Alright, let's get back to the damn mod. So here's some before and after of the main board after I de-dusted it, recapped the power and deflection circuits, mapped out RGB and blanking signals. I drew up a little diagram to understand what I was fooling with. After talking with Mark Ozalad on shmups, we decided to attenuate the signal to 0.5 volt peak to peak. And we had a successful RGB mod, but with very low signal levels, leading to dimness. And we couldn't have that, because it wasn't bright. It was dim, almost black. 
Now it looks better on camera, but it was really dim in person. And you can see by the on-screen menu that something just wasn't right. And the only way to brighten the image was to mess with the sub-levels of RGB and I just couldn't get enough, Captain. So I cranked up the G2 and I thought I fried the whole damn set. I mean, just cranking that G2 up a hair caused the over voltage, but after I shut it down, let it sit for a while, it reset and everything was fine. So back to the drawing board, we're going for one volt peak to peak this time. So here is the mod. A one volt peak to peak RGB signal is obviously what works or I wouldn't have made this video, but the way this jungle chip works, it injects the RGB through the on-screen display deep enough in the circuitry where the on-screen menus for uh, settings, brightness, contrast, all that will not function. You can only adjust it through the service menu and you're limited at that. But luckily one volt peak to peak and resetting my G2 to factory, it's almost a perfect image. So let's carry on with it. First thing you need to locate directly below the Micon chip on the bottom of the board is this cluster of OSD factory grounding resistors. Remove them. Back on the top of the board, here is a quick rundown. Here's the Micon. You can see the signal blanking and the RGB pins. They run through these jumpers. And these jumpers here are where you're going to inject RGB. These caps are going to be replaced with 0.1 microfarad ceramics. IC771 output pin is where you're going to pull 5 volts for your blanking switch. Moving to the back of the board, you have an unpopulated header port on the back of the board. This is where you're going to pull ground for your termination resistors. We're going to put the BNC connectors right here on the back of this panel. Oh yeah. Here's Mark's sketched out schematic for this RGB muxing mod and the blanking circuit switch. And my collage of confusion here. And the basic idea here is to remove those three OSD factory grounding resistors. Like I mentioned earlier, if you look up at the top right, this little diagram to the top middle you can see I replaced C801, C802 and C803 with 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors also named and listed as 104 ceramic caps if you look on Amazon you look down to the bottom right you can see IC771 the output pin on the left should be your five volt source that you're gonna wire to one side of your switch. The other wire is going to go to your jumper W019 with a 1.8K resistor soldered on there. This switch will initiate your RGB signal into the jungle chip. Okay, looking at the very bottom of this image, we can see where we will inject our RGB signals into the board through the jumpers where we will insert our signals through 510 ohm muxing resistors. Then we're gonna run leads from those to our BNC connectors with 180 ohm termination resistors. Um, top left, the diagram, we can see where we got ground for the termination resistors. We pulled it from an empty header spot right below it on the board. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully anybody with this model CRT that ever tries to do this mod can uh, go through Mark's diagram and my little collage and, and get this going because it looks fantastic. Oh yeah. So here we can see those 510 ohm muxing resistors soldered to the leads, heat shrunk, ready to go. Here's our termination resistors at the other end. Here's our BNC connectors with the leads installed. There they are, soldered on to the jumpers. Here's the whole mod complete, switch wired, RGB injected. And here's a little video footage after the mod. There's our five volt source on the board. 
go into the switch other side blanking resistor on w029 there we can see our rgb signals soldered to the jumpers through the 510 mux resistors also a nice look see at the three ceramic caps installed 180 ohm termination to ground on the board right below simple mod didn't have to run one wire over six to eight inches super clean perfect spot on the back of this little access panel here we can see the board getting reinstalled for final testing everything connected and it's time to shut the lid on another rgb job and see what we have the mod was successful and turned out freaking sweet couldn't have been any better the geometry and convergence are on point. Thompson RCA, big 36 inch arcade tube, just like having a giant size PVM. I mean, really, I have PVMs that look worse in the corners and everything. This is like having a giant arcade tube in my bedroom. I wish I had a better camera that was more suited for CRT recording because these pictures and video clips just don't do justice to what this tube looks like in person anyway that's pretty much gonna wrap this one up thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe